Okay, this is going to be part two of my, uh, at least of my first example of finding a solution to a um, non-homogeneous second order linear equation. So in part one, um, so the, remember the theorem says you basically have to find a general solution to the, um, to the complementary equation, which we found in part one. And in part two, it says you have to find a particular solution, again, to your original um, second order uh, differential equation that you're giving, given. <clears throat> so this is the part we're going to do using what's called undetermined coefficients. So kind of the key observation here to get started. Okay, so my particular solution has to be some function of x that's going to satisfy, again, this differential equation. Well, I need equa an equation so that when I take the second derivative of it, add three times the first derivative of it, plus two times the original one, at the end I'm going to have to get, well, x squared, a second degree polynomial. So to me, generically, um, you know, a function that, that would make this happen, um, it seems like to me it would have to be a second order or a degree two polynomial, right? Because if my particular solution y is of this form, again, you know, maybe it's possible to find coefficients a, b, and c so that, again, when I take the first derivative and the second derivative, plug it back into this thing, do the arithmetic, hey, maybe I'll get x squared at, it at the end. I mean, it wouldn't make sense in this problem, for example, to let your particular solution involve sine and cosine. Um, I mean, I guess maybe it could. I, I take that back, but I'm pretty sure, um, to me, it doesn't seem like it would work, right? Because, you know, when you take second derivatives and first derivatives on the left side, you're going to get a bunch of sines and cosines, and I'm just not quite sure how that would simplify down to x squared. So this is going to kind of be the tricky part, um, I think, for a lot of people, is just this is something you have to think about. What would a good particular solution look like? So, okay, once we have this, um, this is where we do this method of undetermined coefficients. The idea is, if I were to take the first derivative of this, I would just get 2a x plus b, and if I were to take the second derivative of this, I would simply be, be left with 2a. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug that back into our differential equation and then just try to solve it. Okay, so we're going to try to solve 2a, there's my y double prime, plus 3 times y prime. Well, y prime was 2ax plus b, and then plus 2 times y, that's our original equation. Um, I think I erased part of it, so it was ax squared plus bx plus c um, equals x squared. So if you remember finding um, coefficients when you do partial fractions techniques, um, you're basically doing the same thing here. Um, now I basically am just going to have to figure out A, B, and C in this problem and use that to come up with my, um, with my particular solution. So I'm just going to multiply this all out. We'll get 2A. When I distribute, it looks to me like I'll get 6AX plus 3B plus 2ax squared plus 2bx plus 2c equals x squared and now I'm just going to group all of my like terms together okay I see a 2a x squared that's the only x squared I see floating around in my problem so that'll take care of that part um, I'm going to factor out the x term so let's see I've got a 6a um, it looks to me like we've got also 2b times x, so that'll take care of those parts. And then it looks like my constants are going to be 2a plus 3b plus 2c. Equals x squared. Okay, and now the idea is if we wanted to, I mean maybe to make it crystal clear, we could expand out the, le the right side, excuse me, as 1x squared plus 0x plus 0, 
So this is where we do our kind of equating of the coefficients. On the left side, it says the number that goes in front of x squared is 2a. Well, on the right side, it says the number that goes in front of the x squared is 1. So that gives us one of our equations we have to solve. Likewise, it says 6a plus 2b. That's the coefficient on the x on the left side. Well, the coefficient of the x on the right side is simply 0. And then we'll get our last equation in the same way. 2a plus 3b plus 2c equals 0. And now we just have to start solving these. All right, so the first one looks like we just get a equals 1 half. Um, if I plug that in, a equals 1 half, well, 6 times 1 half is going to give us 3 plus 2b equals 0. And if we solve for b, um, subtract 3 and divide by 2, looks like we get negative 3 halves. All right, so now we can plug these into the last two. If a is 1 half, 2 times a half will be 1. 3 times um, negative 3 halves is going to give us negative 9 halves. And then it says plus 2 times c, that's going to give us 0. So I think we can solve this. Um, we can make 1, hey, 2 over 2. So 2 minus um, 9 halves is going to give us negative 7 halves. We can add that to both sides. So we'll get 2c equals 7 halves. Divide both sides by 2. And it looks to me like we'll get c equals 7 fourths. OK, so now I have figured out my coefficients, a, b, and c. So again, our particular solution was of the form, get rid of all this stuff. So now we're almost there. Um, so we said our particular solution generically was going to look like a x squared. Um, we had plus bx, so we'll have minus 3 halves x um, plus c, which is 7 fourths. Again, we have our original general solution here from the very beginning of the problem. So it says our um, solution to the whole problem, again, y of x, it says we just take our particular solution and add to it our general solution. Again, the general, the solution, excuse me, I should be saying the solution to the, um, the homogeneous equation. Um, this all produces the general solution. So, so the general solution to my original problem that we're trying to solve, it says basically now all we have to do is just add them together. So we'll get c1 e to the negative x plus c2 e to the negative 2x. So I'm writing them a little backwards, so I've actually um, doing my y sub c part first, plus the particular solution, 1 half x squared minus 3 halves x plus 7 fourths. And whew, that will now be our general solution um, to this original second order non-homogeneous um, differential equation that we we're trying to solve. So, all right, kind of a long process, but um, well, I don't know. It's a pretty tedious little process. So lots of little things you've got to be careful about. Again, you have to be able to solve you know, the, the corresponding homogeneous um, equations. So you have to remember all of those little tricks. And also just you know, the algebra and just sometimes finding these coefficients can be a little tedious. But all right, I hope this helps and makes some sense. If not, feel free to post comments and questions. And hopefully me or somebody else out there can help you out.